The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Professor Ingrid Scott received her bachelor's and master's degrees in mathematics from Hampton University and Howard University. She's been a full-time faculty member of the Montgomery College Mathematics Department since 1998. Scott's interests are in processes by which students develop an understanding of mathematical concepts and how such learning can be fostered. She strives to find ways to engage her students and equip them with strategies to move beyond superficial learning. Scott was a recipient of the 2015 MC Faculty Outstanding Service Award and has served on several college-wide discipline committees throughout her tenure. So first, a few sobering facts I would like to share with you. Today, almost a third of the planet's arable land has been converted to cropland or pasture. More than 90% of monitored fisheries are harvested at or above sustainable limits. Species extinction rates are more than 100 times greater than has been observed in the fossil record. Human health consequences include injury or death directly related to weather extremes, profound changes in disease ecology and geography brought about by shifts in the Earth's ecosystems, reduced air quality, drought-related wildfire smoke, illnesses transmitted by food, water, and vectors like mosquitoes and ticks, and even mental health impacts of natural disasters. Furthermore, the consequences of climate events are not born equally. Climate change and disasters from ongoing drought to unpredictable floods hit the poor the hardest, physically, economically, and socially. Um, globally and in the US, individuals that are already vulnerable are likely to suffer disproportionately as a result of the changing climate. People with the smallest carbon footprint bear the unequal impact of climate change. So my project, well, this year's um, theme, humans in the foot, this year's Smithsonian Fellowship theme, humans, um, humans and the footprints we leave, climate change and other critical challenges provided an ideal opportunity for math 117, for my math 117 elements of statistics students to use statistical, statistical tools taught um, in our introductory the statistics course. So just a few things about my students and the course. Most of the students who take this course are liberal arts majors, they are not STEM majors. And also for the vast majority of them, this is the only um, college level math course that they need to satisfy their requirement for graduation or for transfer. So it's really for those students who need a working knowledge of statistics. And I tell them on the first day that unlike some of the other courses that may, courses they may have taken that are more algebraically based, almost all of the concepts, virtually all of the concepts they learn in this class, they'll be able to apply in their daily lives and even in their other disciplines, especially like the social sciences. In this um, age we're living in, it's especially important that students and everyone that we can become um, critical consumers of information, critically astute consumers of information. So, um, in this project, I was able to develop materials where I, I weaved in climate change aspects of it through all the exercise, all the exercises, mo not all, but most of the exercises and topics we covered in class. Um, because really, educating future generations about the causes and effects of climate change is imperative. Um, is imperative given what's involved and the stakes are, that are involved for this. Since, implement, since implementing solutions depends on an informed public for both societal and individual level actions. So my projects, the activities and lessons provided students with the opportunity to incorporate research and information from Smithsonian exhibits and digital resources to aid them in examining the interconnections among humans and the environment. And so since we were not able to go and visit the museums in person. Fortunately, we were able to use the vast digital resources 
and the virtual tours. So they could still get that, um, that they could get a sense of the museum and the resources it has to offer. And I was so pleased that even though they weren't able to visit the museums in person, they were very positive and excited about what they were able to see in the virtual exhibits and more about that later. Um, we use statistical and analytical tools to examine the climate change phenomena. And we identified sources of climate change evidence. And we explored the connection between climate change pandemics, and environmental racism. So first about the virtual tours and the reading and reflection assignments I gave. So students use the virtual tours and digital resources at the National Museums of Natural History, um, the, National Muse the National Museum of African American History and Culture, as well as the Natural, um, uh, Nas National Museum of the American Indian, to explore the vast resources. And this provided a contextual framework for examining the climate change phenomena. So in these reading and, flex, reading and reflection assignments they were given, they took, they used the virtual tour, the deep time exhibit, a, a virtual tour of the deep time exhibit and the outbreak pandemics in a digital world, both at the National Museum of Natural History to again, deepen their um, understanding of the impact of climate change, as well as pandemics, given what we are currently living through. At the National Museum of the American Indian, they were able to view online videos about the American Indian response to environmental challenges, and also viewing um, videos in the digital resources like that of Dennis Carroll, a conversation with Dennis Carroll, Dennis Carroll for predicting pandemics. So it was, it was helpful. It was reassuring that um, when, they, when they selected these, I'm sorry, not reassuring, but when they selected their, uh, their assignments or the artifacts that they wanted to reflect on in these readings and reflections, for some of these assignments, they were asked to pick at least four images that resonated with them, give a description, the name of the exhibit and the object and the link. But more importantly, they were asked to write a brief essay discussing their impression of the items and respond to the prompts. Why might this matter to me? Why might it matter to people around me? And why might it matter to the world? And really with these assignments, the reading and reflections, I was just trying to get them to think about climate change in a more personal sense as how it might affect to them, affect them as opposed, as opposed to being something affecting people in some far off part of the world or just being animals going extinct and to see it in the more personalized extent. So that was the basis, um, one of the reasons for some of these assignments. So with the outbreak epidemics in a connected world digital exhibit, students learned about pandemics um, throughout history up to the current COVID-19 pandemic that we are currently experiencing and living through. Um, they learned about the transmission of pathogens that cause zoonotic diseases and the climate change connection to outbreaks, um, epidemics, and pandemics. At the beginning of the semester, before the tour, um, the first week of class, I just asked them to list up to six things they knew about climate change, environmental racism, and or pandemics. And it was good to see over the course of the semester with their reading and reflections, with the comments that came up in the course, in the class discussions, when we analyzed data around these different topics, how more informed they were. And they were, they were able to give more substantive responses. And also some of the initial statements that were made that were false or um, indicated a lack of understanding um, the tours, the discussions, the lessons help to dispel some of their initial, pre, initial preconceptions about climate change and the other topics we talked about, class, uh, talked about in class. And they certainly grew in their understanding of the multi, multifaceted impact of climate change. So um, as far as the activities that we did, Throughout the course, I wove it in wherever I could. So we just did statistical analysis of climate change variables. 
So trends in global temperature anomalies and carbon dioxide emissions using graphs and linear regressions. We used accessible and well-documented data sets from NOAA and NASA. And we also looked at the misrepresentation and the misinterpretation of climate change data, uh, specifically like the reasons given for climate change denial. In addition, um, Throughout most classes, we started with some kind of visual graphic because in data visualizations, so because that's a general objective of the course is to just be able to analyze data and information in various formats. So a lot of the visualizations I use had to do with climate change. And just to get them to think about it uh, more deeply, I we typically use these questions, what do you notice? What do you wonder? What is the story? And so here, if you see, it talks about carbon emissions. I'm running a little slow on, um, low on time. So I'm just gonna go through this and just show you the different visualizations we looked at. Um, this next one, um, what do you notice? It was it tied to a study, a study that was published, which revealed which counties are projected because this is in the future. So which counties are projected in the US and those are mostly in, this, in the Southern Gulf where they are projected to incur the most climate change damage at the end of the century. So if you look the red areas in the map showing the most damage um, are again um, states found in the Gulf South in states where some of the poorest black, Latino, Asian and Native American communities are located. And many of these places have already sustained huge tolls from climate change disasters. Um, I had a, a um, final end of the semester project where students had to pick a topic that they were interested in. So this is just um, the Arctic sea ice. So this is one of the topics that one of my students picked where she did some statistical analysis on Arctic sea ice extent. Um, with environmental justice and racism, which was another component of the course, we examined how although climate change is affecting all life on the planet, certain populations are disproportionately, li disproportionately living with the adverse effects of climate change. So that includes like heightened um, environmental risk faced by communities of color, um, including higher levels of lead exposure, higher risk of facing catastrophic flooding and poor air quality. Um, so looking, we looked at data, we looked at the disparities in the distribution of particulate matter, um, emission resources by race and poverty status, racial and socioeconomic disparities in residential proximity to polluting industrial facilities, and also therefore looking at the association between air pollution and the incidence of COVID-19 in communities of black, indigenous, um, and people of color in, um, low income communities. So moving on. Um, in all of this data that when we were looking at environmental justice, environmental and environmental racism, students analyzed demographic data for COVID-19 mortality rates, revealing, for example, the association between long-term exposure to air pollution and the increased risk of dying from coronavirus. COVID-19 is killing Black Americans at twice the rate of their white counterparts in large part because of environmental issues like pollution caused, as, pollution caused asthma and heart disease. Um, and this is just another example of a graphic where and these were actually interactive. So the students were able to go and view different demo, demo, demographic data by different um, race, racial and ethnic, ethnic categories for different states in the country. So we examined that. Also, um, as part of this experience and meeting um, my colleagues in the cohort, we had a guest lecturer, Montgomery College's own Dr. Craig Benson, who came and gave a very well received talk. The students asked so many questions about what causes climate change. So that was a great benefit to their understanding. And the final project, what again was a presentation 
of an article or study related to climate change or environmental racism or COVID-19 that they got to pick. So I left it open to them. And so they had to include a summary of the article, detailed statistical analysis, so depending on what the article was they chose, a data visualization, and a conclusion, including opinions about the article stu or study and why it was important to them. Um, in closing, um, the Smithsonian Fellowship presented a rare opportunity to enrich the classroom experience with lessons built around world events unfolding before our very eyes. Students expressed a deepened understanding of the impact of climate change on, on different aspects of their lives, be it the disproportionate impact of climate change on low income communities and communities of color, the relationship between climate change and the increasing outbreaks and pandemics that we are and will be continue to experience, or even just the ability to discern between climate versus weather or climate change versus global warming. So they finished the course as more informed citizens of the world regarding the climate change phenomena. So um, I, I just, these are just the course outcomes that I really felt that they were meant, they were satisfied. And I will just leave in closing with a few comments that I lifted from the evaluation and the survey that students completed about some of the things they gained from the course. Again, I would like to thank the Paul Peck Humanities. I would like to thank Philippa Rappaport and the Smithsonian staff who came out and gave excellent presentations. And I would also like to thank my Dean, Dr. Milton Nash, and my department chair, Dr. Ben Nicholson, for supporting this endeavor of mine to take on this project.